The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter Once upon a time there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said all Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into a mischief. I'm going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane together to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some french beans and then he ate some radishes and then feeling rather sick he went to look for some parsley but round the end of the cucumber frame who should he meet but mr mcgregor mr mcgregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages but he jumped up and ran after peter waving a rake and calling out stop thief Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one shoe amongst the cabbages and the other amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by a large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with the brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears. But his sobs were overheard by, by some friendly sparrows, who flew to him in a great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop on the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. He rushed into a tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Achoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot up on Peter, who jumped out of window, upsetting three plants. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which, which way to go. Also, he was very damp with, with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in the wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peep Peter asked her the way to gate but she had such a large bee in her mouth, she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden. But he became more and more puzzled. Presently he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor's filled, filled his uh, water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hose screech. Scratch, scratch. 
Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out, climbed up on a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some blackcurrant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in a wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was a second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave him a dose of it to Peter, and one teaspoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Night-night.